The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk that's not in the Constitution. It was in a stinking letter, and it means nothing like what they say it does. Okay, well, let's think about that, you dumb bitch. <laughs> All right, I have a question. What is Lauren Boebert going to do after she loses in November? We'll get to that. But first, how did Lauren Boebert get to this place in our culture where we're even talking about her? By this place, I mean, when it comes to flat out crazy, Boebert holds the distinction of giving Dairy Queen a solid run for her money. Collectively, Boebert and Green are Trump's last minute prom dates, jumping up like my dog when I walk through the door. They both have spread lies and disinformation for Donnie and Dietable, indictable, but with entirely different results. Dairy Queen's district is poised to send her back to the Capitol, despite her massive foobars at every turn. You can actually make the case Margie's responsible for Buck and Gallagher saying adios to their seats and putting the once majority GOP house in a virtual deadlock, which is remarkable because her insanity was so unpredictable that she was not allowed on a committee her first two years in Congress. But back to Boebert. Mr. Allen, did you or did you not decriminalize public urination? Did Never you nice ever vote in favor of decriminalizing public urination? nation in Washington, D.C. These changes are now law here in D.C., correct? Do you mean the revised criminal code? Yes. Uh, no, those are not the law. Those are not the law. Did with, yeah. We have records that show that you were in favor of removing that criminal offense and allowing public urination. Now, when most of us think of Miss Cracker Barrel, this is a crazy shit that comes to mind. And God, I almost feel sorry for her, but I can't. As you'll see in a couple minutes, judging from the depths of her cruelty and ignorant attacks on anyone or anything, uh, uh. Bobert might have been cloned from an errant Trump skin tag. And they come home, many of the world's fittest and best trained warriors in the world. Never the same. Headaches, numbness, dizziness. A cancer that would put them in a flag draped coffin. I know. One of those, one of those soldiers was my son, Major Bo Biden. Lauren Boebert is a horrible person. Here interrupting Biden's State of the Union when he was talking about the death of his son from brain cancer. Now I do have some colleagues on the Hill who have, um, just like me, offered Kyle Rittenhouse an internship. Before being elected to Congress, Boebert actually owned a bar that required you to have a gun to enter. But guess what? This ain't the wild, wild west. In fact, ask the dozens of people killed in the state's mass shootings over the last 10 years. Colorado does have some of the most strictest gun laws. We have just about everything that Democrats are wanting to push nationally. And unfortunately, our state is showing that these do not work. Uh, Chicago is showing that gun laws do not work. And, uh, and every time something like this happens, there's more knee-jerk reactions to legislate law-abiding citizens and restrict them from being able to defend themselves. In America, we, we we see more deaths by hands, fists, feet, even hammers. And, uh, you know, are we going to start legislating that away? But this ain't the wild, wild west. Colorado, with its long history of mass shootings from Columbine to Aurora, does have strict gun laws. Unless you're a minor, a felon, or mentally ill, where you can buy a weapon from someone you met in a parking lot. But Lauren Boebert has a train wreck long before being elected to Congress. With multiple arrests and a couple convictions, her husband was also arrested for indecent exposure to minors. Uh, maybe we need to have some sort of legislation that requires Constitution Alive and biblical citizenship training in our schools. Uh, and, and that's how we get things turned around. Uh, but there, there has to be real leadership from the Republicans. Yeah, and what a spokesperson you'd be for Trump's white Christian nationalist movement. The little Twitter trolls, they like to say, Oh, Jesus didn't need an AR-15. How, how many AR-15s do you think Jesus would have had? Well, he didn't have enough to keep his government from killing him. To the place right now, if you vote Democrat, I don't even want you around this church. You can get out. This is not without thoughtful planning. If you don't like our religion, then we don't want you in our country. Evangelicals are preaching that the end is coming and only Trump can save us. By us, I don't mean Jews. Sorry. Jews will not replace us! Now reports are coming in that over the last three months, the Cracker Barrel is beginning to lose it, getting shat-faced at Republican events. So much she was cut off, and at one occasion, the Secret Service, after she got 10 selfies with Donnie Sniffles, removed her from the room. And most recently, after winning last year's election by only 500 votes, she decided to carpetbag nearby Republican Ken Buck's district. Uh, really, we're at a time in American politics 
that um, I am not going to lie on behalf of my presidential candidate, on behalf of my party. Buck, who was due to retire in the fall, instead abruptly quit, which really hosed Cracker Barrel. Colorado's going to have a special election in June, but Boebert can't run without giving up her current seat. And even with Trumpy's endorsement, she's in trouble. Yesterday, the greatest president of the United States of America, President Donald J. Trump, has fully and completely endorsed me. Boebert has two sides. Some days, she's as dim-witted as a dog that chases cars, and on other days, well, she's still as dumb as a brick, but she's also a bigoted cow. Today, we have yet another turn in Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert's bigoted comments about Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. It appears that Boebert's little made-up story about Omar is not an isolated incident. I look to my left, and there she is, Ilhan Omar. Oops. And I said, well, she doesn't have a backpack. We should be fine. Oh. <laughs> One of my staffers on his first day with me got into an elevator <laughs> in the Capitol. And in that, in that elevator, we were joined by Ilhan Omar. Well, it was just us three in there, and I looked over and I said, well, look at there, it's the Jihad Squad. Yeah. <laughs> Then, of course, there was this. Bobert is seen on video blowing smoke before the start of the show. At one point, her date is apparently unable to keep his hands to himself. Eventually, the couple is escorted from the theater, Bobert giving staff the middle finger and allegedly saying, don't you know who I am? Now, I don't care that she gave a guy a hand job or that he was reciprocating or they were vaping and being generally disruptive. It's the do you know who I am attitude that pisses me off. That's the Trump effect. There's a palpable sense of entitlement by the Boperts, Greens, and Gates of the world, whose only accomplishments have been making Americans consider moving to Spain. So how did she get elected to Congress? That's a good question. Let's answer that question by first asking this question. What's wrong with Republican men? And a follow-up, why do Republican women put up with it? Grab them by the pussy. Shocker, when it comes to women, the Republican Party is not what you would call progressive. Remember mocking Hillary for wearing a pantsuit? Even throwing out their assault on women's bodily autonomy, female GOP candidates are judged first on their looks and only then secondly judged on whether or not they know their place. Oh, uh, have you watched these pro-abortion, pro-murder rallies? The people are just disgusting. Like, why is it that the women with the least likelihood of getting pregnant are the ones most worried about having abortions? Nobody wants to impregnate you if you look like a thumb. That is a perfect encapsulation of the GOP. Bopert and Green have a trash stamp appeal that gets Republican middle-aged men hot and bothered. And as long as they stay in their lane, everything's cool. And of course, Gates has his own issues, chasing teens across state lines with his wingman in jail and new charges headed for rapey McForehead. So what's next for Bobart? It doesn't look good. Her attack on McCarthy propelled the party down a slide, which Republicans may look back as the beginning of the end. And she'll be running in the fall against a Republican who won the special election. And even with Tiny Fingers endorsement, it's a pretty good bet she'll be back hostessing a Cracker Barrel. But maybe I'm underestimating her. Who knows? She could be the manager. Time to pack it up. I'm just getting warmed up. Who's with me? This isn't their Republican party anymore. Am I wrong? Damn right. Yes. Tick tock. We're in a lot of trouble, Donnie. <laughs> Follow, like, and please subscribe to Really American, where we keep you up to date on the latest Republican cult lie in this very important year. Hey, and make sure you join us as a member on Patreon, where we can connect directly with you and enable us to expand, make more videos, and hire more hosts. Can't do it without you. For Really American... I think he's crazy. I'm Chip Franklin. Hey.